Hello class 10 students. I am happy that you have submitted your project works and almost all the students except one or two students who have not submitted the project. I hope so. They will understand and they will submit the project as duly I have uh, asked you to give a one, one week earlier. So continuing with the videos that I have not uploaded any videos just for your evaluations of your answers question and answers and giving time to the chapters and almost in this month of July uh, according to the course that I have followed that has been given by the CBA board that is up to the, the history the chapters and also I am trying to advance towards the subjects uh, chapters exceeding uh, with the syllabus uh, that almost three chapters are done from history and also geography two chapters are already done and also political science from the economic parts that is the second part of the third part of the uh, social science books that is the economic that I will continue this chapter and continuing with the history part that has been uh, discussing with you that is in the last chapter in the last discussion we discussed about the non-cooperation movement in Assam. So continue with that, let's continue with this uh, part that is the civil disobedience movement in Assam. So <clears throat> almost till then the non-cooperation movement was stopped, was withdrawn by Mahatma Gandhi himself due to uh, the Chori Chora event as Mahatma Gandhi has strictly instructed the people of India not to use violence method only to adopt non-violence but because of the Chorishara event Mahatma Gandhi term it has an Himalayan blunder and as a result he withdrawn the movement he called up the movement again there has been a problem that has a, uh, there has been a problem every time the government wanted to suppress and also they wanted to keep in check that a new movement would start by the Indian people so in this way there were the causes which has been discussed in uh, the second chapter that is the Simon Commission and also demanding the demand of the Indian National Congress to accept for accepting the Nehru report as a constitution new constitution for India the British knew that if the British would uh, accept the Indian constitution the Nehru report as Indian constitution for uh, in, in for Indian constitution that is if British would accept then India would got a complete dominant status so British didn't want to do that one so in this way the civil union movement was started by the by Mahatma Gandhi by disobeying the civil rule disobeying the laws laws by throwing out a challenge um, by disobeying the salt by disobeying the uh, regulation that is for manufacturing of salt as Dandi Mars was started so in this Dandi Mars one of the prominent leader that is Lila Dhar Barua from Assam was also um, participating also participated um, in the Dandi March so at that time in Assam like Hem Chandra Barua, Muhammad Tayabullah, Vishnu Ram Medhi and Ambika Giri Roy Chaudhuri they assembled at the judges field and they expressed their solidarity, solidarity with Gandhi's Salt Satyagraha and as a result, they wanted to um, contribute in the civil union movement. But almost at that time, just before a few years earlier, uh, the Assam, the Assamese people uh, were suffering with very hardship, many hardships due to the ongoing non-cooperation movement, and they were hesitating to contribute their effort in the civil disobedience movement but still some of the uh, leaders like Bishnurara Medhi, Tayabullah, Ambika Giri Raichari were actively engaged in organizational work under several financial constraints. Financial constraints means to start a movement they are needed various, uh, uh, the various activities and to continue those activities the people needed money capital so there was a shortage of capital of the organizations so they wanted to raise the fund and various committees and subcommittees were uh, organized were formed within this 
within their groups and the objectives of the newly formed committees was to raise fund and going against the repressive law enacted by the british government and also the ordinance again going against the ordinance boycott of british goods and anti opium and liquor campaign opium you have already understood what is opium and going against the opium and liquor campaign some of the young leaders like omio kumar das who had appealed the students to join the movement but the response was very less the response was not not until unless rg cunningham who was a director of uh, public instructor issued a circular on may 1930 that uh, this circular was popular, popularly known as cunningham cunningham circular and this circular according to circular the students were asked the students and their parents were asked to provide a written documents written undertaking that is an agreement has to be done by the parents and the students with the institutional management that they need to give a guarantee of the student that if the students would participate or if they per, that the participate the student would not participate in any kind of political activity and if the student is participating in any kind of political that those who are found participating or found guilty would be punished by imposing fines and depriving from scholarship and also in some cases expulsion by imposing uh, imposing in case of severe crimes so the movement was solely of a non violent and also the people had the right to um, raised voice against the repressive laws so it was their rights a fundamental rights that has been they have understood in their way but it was like a humiliating law to the indian people to the people so this movement and this law that has been this circular cunningham circular was uh, the sole response uh, was a, was so, solely responsible for sparking up the civil disobedience movement as a result the students the student communities also reacted to this um, circular and finally sparked up the movement the assam satra samilan that is a student union in those time organized a special session at guwahati to discuss about and the about the plans of actions they decided to picket government institutions and as a result many students left their uh, left their institution between july and august that is 1930 picketing were soon extended to opium and liquor campaign liquor shops prisons to got engaged in a movement by demanding reduction of land revenue by 50% not only the students not only the common people the prisons were also Uh, participating in a movement by demanding of the reduction of the land taxes by 50%. Forest law was also violated in certain areas, in like in some places like Chapapur, Bijni. Students unrest took place in Sumba Valley as well. So this was the where the activities that was going in Assam, and I and we have already studied in the chapter two that this thing was going on. um because uh, there were certain causes that have we have studied and also how it stopped that is in the civil disobedience movement mahatma gandhi had an agreement with viceroy lord irwin irwin precisely and duly postponed the movement and mahatma gandhi went to the second round of uh, round of conference as agreed with uh, the viceroy and there was no conclusion in the second round of conference and in vain mahatma gandhi had to return from second round of conference and restarted the civil disobedience till then british were able to um make effort to be prepared for the movement to that would be um started again restarted again the british knew about it that mahatma gandhi will re- would return and this time by quick force the british tackled the movement and in slowly uh, whipping um, uh, punishment arrestment co- arresting confiscated uh, vernacular press were uh, banned and also the um, uh, people who were engaged in the indian national congress were also been arrested and in this way swiftly the, Mahat- uh, the british swiftly started to arrest the people and tried to control the civil disobedience movement and in this way for about 4 years the civil disobedience lingered on and upon the frustration of the indian people the people thought that 
it was it would be baseless to continue this movement in this way the people were frustrated and finally mahatma gandhi call of the movement the civil union movement you see the british government has got enough uh, time to suppress the movement as mahatma gandhi went for this uh, discussion in the round table conference and every time the the characteristics of the british government were breaking of the promise they were the breaker they were the the structure of the promise any promise they would made by the indian people with the indian people every time every promises were every promise were every promise was uh, broken by the british government and in this way this time also in the civil union movement the promise so in the next time when the indian people started the quit india movement this time the indian demanded the british for quitting india they don't want any british national to administer the country so in the next video we will discuss about the quit india movement how it started and also taking reference from the second chapter that is quit india movement how it started and how it was suppressed by the british government we will discuss but taking preference with the with the state of assam what was going on in the quit india movement and i want to mention during the quit india movement that one person whose name was kushal kuwar he was the only martyr to be hanged by the british and it was the last time during the freedom movement that kushal kuwar was hanged the first person who was hanged who fought against the british government that was the first war of independence during the first war of independence that uh, that was the revolt of 1857 he was mangal pandey mangal pandey by with mangal pandey the uh, punishment capital punishment was awarded by british government this was the starting and it was ended by kushal kuwar in assam so again one another uh, girl of 14 years of age from gohpur was shot brutally so this were these are the certain events that we can we will study in the next um, videos that i will upload i hope so you will understand and that you have completed your project work during this sessions and congratulation for that and i hope so uh, this is the half of the project work that i have given you and another half i will uh, give you in later part of the time that is probably in the next month in the month of july this month in the month of june is going on and almost by finishing this fourth chapter i had be com concluding completed with the uh, first phase that is the half yearly uh, though the exam will be there or not i don't know but following the protocol following the syllabus that i am trying to continue complete with this uh, chapter that is fourth chapter history though history fourth chapter is not included in half yearly exam but i want to go in advance and again there will be left one more chapters from the economics part that will that will be continued so understanding the situation during the lockdown period i hope so you will stay at home and do care for your own studies for your own health and also study hard during this uh, lockdown period at your home if you have any problem you should ask questions to me and i will try to remain online every time in whatsapp and whenever you find difficulty in contacting me with the uh, whatsapp because of some data sources but slowly do if i have not have um, outgoing facilities in my phone number but still there is incoming facilities whenever it's possible i am able to recharge my pack so you may call me thank you